Hello, my name is Carolyn Anand and I am the project nurse for the Anchor Centre. It is my pleasure to introduce this fly-through which will illustrate the main design features of the new Anchor Centre facility and will give viewers an indication of the overall environment we will create to benefit patients, families and staff. The Anchor Centre will bring radiotherapy, oncology and haematology together as well as providing the aseptic pharmacy suite for NHS Grampian and dedicated teaching and non-clinical accommodation. We are very proud of the design that has been achieved in collaboration with our stakeholders, including patient, charity and staff representatives. This building will support patients and families going through challenging times, so it was essential to include input from patients to achieve the final design. We are creating a welcoming building that is friendly and non-clinical where possible, with the aim of soothing anxieties that may be felt as you walk through the front door. I do hope that you enjoy this fly-through, and on behalf of NHS Grampian and the project team, thank you for watching. Welcome to the Forrester Hill Health Campus, home to two new modern, innovative and transformational buildings, the Baird Family Hospital and the Aberdeen and North Centre for Haematology, Oncology and Radiotherapy Services. The Anchor Centre is the first of its kind in Scotland, with dedicated day and outpatient accommodation for oncology, haematology and radiotherapy services, including an on-site aseptic pharmacy, state-of-the-art clinical and academic teaching facilities for the delivery of treatment and support for patients. Easily recognisable from all approaches, there will be accessible parking and drop-off facilities adjacent to the front door. Our reception and main waiting area on the ground floor will be welcoming and bright. Our reception team, along with friends of Anchor Host, will be available to assist with self-check-in and directions. Informal, comfortable seating will provide a safe place to talk, reflect and think. The consulting suite sub-waiting area is light with natural finishes and a warm environment to help patients feel reassured in the short period of time they will wait before being directed through to the consulting rooms. With 20 in total, each consulting room will be used by both medical and clinical staff. They are furnished with state-of-the-art equipment and surroundings, supporting the needs of staff, patients and loved ones. The double-height atrium space will be bright, bringing the outdoors in, giving people an outdoor view whilst enjoying a cup of coffee or using the information hub within the area, courtesy of the free Wi-Fi. A teenager and young adult lounge will be a protected space for the 16 to 25 year old age group. The open staircase to the treatment suite has two landing areas for people to pause and catch their breath before arriving at the sub-waiting area. The 28 treatment chair space will include new and innovative equipment, providing our clinical teams with the best possible environment for treating our patients during lengthy periods of time. The configuration of chairs allows for flexibility of having a loved one with you, chatting to the person next to you or simply having some privacy. There are two procedure rooms which will be utilised for different individual procedures in a dignified space. Everyone knows of the fantastic Friends of Anchor complimentary therapy services and this private, luxurious spa appearance room will aid further in the benefit this brings to patients. Patient consultation during the design of the building has been invaluable and heavily featured has been the access to or sight of an outdoor area. These areas will be maintained by a Friends of Anchor gardening team including many volunteers. The Anchor Centre, making a difference to oncology and haematology patients in the northeast of Scotland. Thanks for inviting me. It's nice to be here on behalf of NHS Grampian. You'll have just seen the Anchor Centre fly through, which will have shown you everything that's going to be in our new building. I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to speak about how the consultation and engagement that we have done with people has influenced the design. 
Um, for those that maybe have been involved around any kind of project, then you'll know that there's lots of building standards and lots of technical guidance that needs to be followed. And whilst in the project team, we have on occasion congratulated ourselves for achieving that. When we then go to do the consultation, it can be a very different story. Uh, one that always sticks in my mind is around toilets. Um, and when we have the treatment area, the nice open plan treatment area, we had two toilets which met standards. We went to um, a men's vision breakfast, which was hosted by Friends of Anchor. And they told us about how many times they need to visit the loop when they are in, sometimes for six, seven, eight hour treatments. So we now have four toilets. We've doubled the toilets in that area. And we also have included some more privacy and dignity to allow them to, in a discrete area, as opposed to just directly off the main area, to use it. Other things is about the variety of seating. You know, when you go to any NHS or public sector buildings, you get those lovely plastic 17 pound seats that you sit in and uh, squirm around it just like that for a wee while. Sometimes you can be waiting for a period of time when between getting your appointments. So we just want to avoid that. And we have done quite a lot of consultation on what they would like. Patients and public want to have a variety, not just all the low seating, not just high seating, depending on treatments, depending on what's happening around with people, they want to have the choice. And the seating will be arranged in such a way that it will also give private spaces and quieter spaces for people to go whilst they're waiting. I think that's very common in NHS buildings when you walk in is that it's very sterile. Um, everything is white and it can be quite intimidating and quite off-putting. A common theme that's come through for consultation is they want it to be a space where they can breathe. They don't want to be greeted by sterile white walls. And just, I've been to a few consultations early on in my uh, discussions with people and merrily went around saying, yeah, no problem, we won't give you any white walls. It's fine, we'll give you colours and we'll give you this and we'll give you that. I then came back to our project director and shared this news and she was in horror going, no, Louise, you can't do that. The problem is that if we have a lovely blue wall and then by the time it gets bashed with trolleys and this and that, and the third thing, we can't just pop out and get a wee paint pot to match it up, but we can do that with white paint. So how we will enhance the area is through pictures uh, or through art. There is a whole art strategy. There's an interior design strategy. And also there are outdoor spaces. So it's be taken the outside in. And a lot of the consultation from all patients groups and public has actually been about making sure that although they may not be able to access those areas, they can still see them. We've done a lot of consultation across the country. Um, we've been to Orkney, uh, we've been to Shetland. Uh, we go up there quite a few times and because they have completely different needs to what our city patients need. And um, we've also been down to various areas across England. Uh, we've been to Harrogate, we've been to London, we've been to Manchester to look at the actual configuration of how the equipment and the treatment chair specifically are laid out. We wanted the flexibility of our treatment chairs so that patients have the choice whether they want to turn their chairs so that they've got a bit of privacy or whether they want to come into a centre hub and they can see what other people are doing. And they can have a chat with their uh, patient or the relative that's beside them, or as I say, they can have that bit of quiet time. I've mentioned art strategy, I've mentioned interior design um, and our fundraising, uh, which we are very fortunate and grateful to Friends of Anchor who are going to, Erica's going to give you a wee presentation on shortly, that they are on board with us, have been since before the Anchor Centre vision as such, they are there as part of the Anchor unit already. And they're working with us as to how we can enhance areas within the Anchor Centre and their fundraising campaign Anchor Together will provide that difference of funding that we need. Things like a complimentary therapy room, which will be a very luxurious spa-like feeling, uh, which everybody, whatever patient groups we go to, everybody is very excited about that. 
Um, so a common misconception that it's only women who want to uh, use these facilities has now been proven to be not quite true. Um, and other thing is about our information hub. So historically, um, it's always been bits of paper, you get leaflets um, about information to take away with you. And now we will be introducing an information hub and there will be iPads there that people can look up the information whilst they're at the information hub or they can take the iPads and go and sit in their chair. There will still be leaflets though because not everybody likes the technological world that we now live in um, and they still like that bit of paper to take away with them. So to quickly summarise, the Anchor Centre is the first of its kind in Scotland. It is a £43 million build from capital monies provided by NHS Scotland. The difference that we need to make it more than just as brilliant as it will be will come from fundraising. Our outpatient and our day patient services will now be co-located with the radiotherapy service. So when our patients come, they're coming to the same place as opposed to having to go to different locations like we do just now. And it really is exciting. What I will leave you with before I hand over to Erica is a couple of photos of where we are with construction now. So the fly through shows you the artist's impression and these photos show you how we actually are as of Friday last week. Thank you so much and I'll pass you to Erica. Thank you very much Louise. Um, it's been such a pleasure to see Louise and her team at work over the past few years because this is a team that has just poured so much passion into this project. Um, the years and years of consultation that have gone into it have been really well thought out, really well considered. And obviously, as you've heard, the changes that are being implemented within the building are going to be really worthwhile for the 65,000 people who will use the centre every year. So Friends of Anchor is a dedicated charity that is supporting the Anchor Centre, but I'm well aware that many of you, if not all of you, won't have any knowledge of Friends of Anchor itself. So I'd like to give you just a little kind of potted history of what we do. So next year, Friends of Anchor will be 25 years old. Uh, we were founded in 1997 to meet that kind of over and above demand that the NHS, for good reason, isn't able to meet. So those extra comforts, that additional research. Um, we're there for that piece of the puzzle. So we operate under four main funding pillars, some of which are really visible um, and which patients feel really clued up on and others which kind of happen a little bit more quietly behind the scenes. So those four things are patient wellbeing, uh, medical equipment, clinical excellence and research as well. So we fund those four core areas. And what's really unique about Friends of Anchor is that we're in a very privileged position to be able to say that all of the running costs of the charity are covered by our core sponsor, a company called Balmor Balmoral Group um, in Aberdeen. They cover uh, my wage, the wage of my colleagues, they cover our office space, the cost of sending thank you letters and certificates to our fundraisers, anything that you could think of that goes into the running cost of the charity is covered, which frees up every penny of every pound to do the good work that we're able to do thanks to the support of those who back the charity. Um, so as a dedicated charity for the Anchor Centre, what that looks like for us is funding that, again, that over and above piece, always that over and above piece of what will really make the difference for patients. Um, so our target is the biggest target we have ever um, tried to meet, which is two million pounds. And amazingly, we have just celebrated reaching the halfway mark. Uh, we had an event just recently as well, so we are nudging ever closer in that second half of the fundraising target, which is really exciting. Um, this fundraising, as Louise touched on previously, is all about those added things that don't come into the NHS core spend. So enhancing the atmosphere, um, contributing towards that beautiful artwork that Louise referenced, you know, funding the gap between the the NHS standard chairs, which are less comfortable, less movable, to get those really comfy ones, which are going to be much more relaxing to sit in for eight hours at a time. Um, we'll also be funding the complimentary therapy room. And with that comes a little bit of context to how Friends of Anchor support will look once the centre opens. So it's not just this short period of fundraising, two million, and then the job is done. Friends of Anchor will be there every single day the centre is open in various different capacities. Um, but one of the most visible things for patients will be hosting the wellbeing um, within that complimentary therapy room, but also by the chair side with nail services, um, podiatry, hair and wig styling, beard shaving, you name it, those little pamper things that patients love so much, that's what we'll be there to do. Um, there's an awful lot 
more that will be going on through that as well and if it's something that you would like to find out more about um, or the charity as a whole you can visit our website at friendsofanchor.org and um, but for now I think hopefully that gives you a little insight as to how we are supporting this fantastic new hospital. <laughs>